This is the new Volkswagen Amarok and it's a little bit like Jay Leno wearing lederhosen. Reason being that basically this truck is a Ford Ranger. Volkswagen have taken it and given it some new body panels, some different interior trim and stuck the VW badge on it. And in this video, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about this pickup, talk you around the exterior, show you the inside, see how practical it is, take it for a drive. And of course, I'm going to launch it to see how quick it is from 0 to 60 miles an hour because I'm Matt Watson and you're watching Car Wow. And I wonder what I'd look like in Lederhosen. Buy, sell, car, wow. Let's start this video by talking about the design of the new Amarok. And while it may be based on the Ford Ranger, the body panels that are carried over are just the roof and the door mirror caps. Oh, and the door handles. The rest of it is all bespoke for VW, though it's a pickup. They all look rather similar, don't they? Though look, you have Amarok clearly embossed on the back. On a Ford Ranger, it's Ford Ranger embossed on the back. But anyway, oh, some 3D tail lights, quite nice. And then this particular version has these railings. You don't get those on the entry level model. This is actually the Panamericana, so it has some like black bits of trim and stuff like this, some smoked effect. Oh, we've got some running boards, can I run along them? Just about. The Alloy World design is like smoked effect as well. Now, the wheel sizes start at 17 inches, which will be good for off-roading because you'll have fat sidewalls. Though, on the range shopping version, you can get up to 21 inch wheels on a pickup. Not know if I'd do that. Anyway, moving to the front, very distinctive look to it. It looks more SUV than pickup truck. And I think that's helped with this Panamericana version because it has this like matte dark gray effect again, whereas lower models down the range have silver. That doesn't look quite as good. It's quite an imposing looking thing. As for the price, well, the Amarok range starts at £41,000. Now this particular model I've got here, the Panamericana with the V6 diesel, it's £57,000. Ooh, it's quite a lot. Now, if you're thinking about buying a new pickup truck, you might need to sell your current vehicle and you can do that through CarWow. All you have to do is upload some photos of your vehicle, give a brief description, then dealers all across the country will bid on it. You just pick the highest offer, they'll come to your house, take the car away, and then put the money into your account. It's easy. If you'd like to check that out right now, just click on the pop-out banner up there for the link I'll put in the description of this video. Alternatively, you can do it at a later date by simply Googling help me car wow don't know why i said it like that <laughs> we will help you sell your car here on the inside the amarok feels very nice for a work ready pickup truck it's more like a normal suv so you've got soft touch materials here and here I quite like the stitching and the overall design is good i'm not sure about the fake i don't know what it is is it fake snake skin or here and here don't like that i do like the infotainment system though you've got this big screen on all but the entry level version which has a slightly smaller screen and thankfully it's ford system not volkswagens which means that it's actually okay to use so of course as well as your usual features and your inbuilt sat nav and all that kind of thing you have apple carplay and android auto so you can use those for mapping if you prefer you have some shortcut buttons down there but the climate control is controlled through the touch screen there's no physical knobs for that which is a bit of a shame and a bit of a faff when you're driving over sight over rough terrain you need to suddenly just operate something it's much easier to grab a knob than it is to press a touch screen the digital driver's display is very good and you've got different views you can cycle through and you can control various functions using the buttons on the steering wheel speaking of which yeah plenty of adjustment and it feels nice to the touch as well there's plenty of adjustment in the driver's seat and the seats are electrically operated which is good in terms of storage in here well there's a decent bin under here you've got two cup holders there which are a decent size as well there's a place there for your mobile phone with wireless charging two usbs 12 volt socket the glove box is okay in size and oh look we've got an extra one up there i like that and the door bins big flask important in a work vehicle must take that does just about that would have been catastrophic if it hadn't let's have a look at the sun visors do they extend yes that's good a big vanity mirror and there's a place for your sunglasses up there as well and the ever important handle for getting in and out which i'm going to do now why did i go there for the handle it's there just like on a ford raptor look i love the handle for getting in and out i really do i don't know why i just got back in again i need to get into the back seats to show you those here in the back knee room is pretty decent so too is headroom so it's five for adults and if you need to carry three of your workmates across the building site in the back you can though 
shoulder room is a little bit tight. When it comes to fitting a baby seat though, there's something really annoying about this truck. The way they've cut these slits into the fabric on the seat, it actually gets in the way of the anchor points on the child seat. So when you're trying to fit it, it takes forever Ever. But once you finally get it in there, there is just enough room without having to move the front passenger seat forward. Speaking of which, look, you've got these little pockets on the seat back, probably for mobile phones and then another seat pocket there. Down here we have a three pin socket and a 12 volt socket. All very utilitarian. No USB-Cs back here. There's decent sized door bins there, which is handy. And I like this, the rear windows. Get off me. That was a biter, look at it, look. That is definitely a bitey fly. Anyhow, that's the kind of thing you encounter when you're driving this kind of vehicle. Yeah, rear windows go all the way down and you have an armrest here, though the cup holders are exposed, you end up putting your wrist in them. But that's not too much of a hardship. In a pickup truck. Oh, you can do this, look. You can fold this down if you need to like carry stuff on the back seats and you don't want to damage your fabric. Anyway, let's check out the low bed. One thing I like about the Amarok is that the tailgate isn't too heavy. Look, I can lift it with my finger. You can't do that on a Toyota Hilux. However, if you want to see my full in-depth video review of the Toyota Hilux, click on the pop-out banner up there for the link in the description below. Anyway, in terms of payload, starts from 887 kilograms, rising up to 1,113 kilograms. As for the dimensions, you can fit a Euro-sized pallet in there sideways. It's important that. What is a bit of a shame is that there's no like lining to this, so you're gonna scratch it quite easily. And that brings me on to five annoying things about the Amarok. Not only is the gear sector unnecessarily annoyingly large, but there's these buttons on the side to change gear if you want to do it manually, and they're just so hard to use. Why couldn't we have some paddles on the steering wheel? Unlike with the Ford Ranger that the Amarok shares its chassis with, you can't get a single cab version, which might be better for work. When you fold in the door mirrors, they make this weird moaning sound. <sighs> this is bad when you put them back out again. This Amarok is actually built at Ford's factory in South Africa, and you can tell that Ford has kept some of the best bits for itself. For instance, you can only get leaf spring on the rear suspension for the Amarok, Whereas with the Ford, you can get the Ranger Raptor and that has coil springs. The Ranger Raptor also comes with a fast petrol V6 engine. There's no option of that on the Amarok, I'm afraid. While it's great that this pickup truck has 360 degree cameras to help you navigate around tight spots. Look at that, it's really, really clever, I like that. Annoyingly, when you go forward, it switches off immediately. That'd be handy when you're trying to go forwards through a tight space. Why can you only do it backwards? That is in fact a little bit backwards, if you ask me. Anyway, it's not all bad. Here's five cool things about the Amarok. When you're having an argument with your builder mates about who's got the most powerful pickup truck, you can actually settle your willy waving competition using this special ruler on the tailgate. It goes all the way up to 130 centimeters as well as an electronically selectable four-wheel drive system with low range mode. There is a rear locking differential, hill descent control, and various driving modes, ranging from normal, eco, towing, slippery conditions, mud and ruts, and deep sand and snow. This truck comes with the peace of mind of a five-year warranty and five free services. There's a USB port mounted just behind the rear view mirror, which is really handy if you use a dash cam because then you don't have to have wires dangling down across the dash. You can tell this truck is built in South Africa. I'm sure my South African viewers know exactly what I mean. You can get a roller cover for the load bed, which you can operate using the key. There's a full hard top for the load bed as well for even more practicality. You can even get a tent for it, so you can camp out in your truck. Engine choices are simple. There's a two litre turbocharged diesel with 170 horsepower. That comes with a manual gearbox. Then there's a two litre turbocharged diesel with 205 horsepower, and that has a 10 speed automatic gearbox. Then there's this range stopping engine. It's a three litre V6 turbo diesel with 240 horsepower. This also comes with a 10 speed automatic gearbox. I'm gonna start off by seeing what this Amarok is like to drive in probably the worst situation for it. And that's round town. You see, it's a big truck. So 
It can be a bit tricky to navigate around tiny British streets and through villages. Also in places such as this, you do find quite a lot of bumps, potholes and sometimes speed humps. And to tell you the truth, for a pickup truck, the suspension does a good job of dealing with bumps. It doesn't feel too agricultural, which I'm surprised about. The raised driving position, you see it really quite high. It does give you a good view forward. Though the dash is quite high as well, so that does impact things slightly. I think the biggest issue for most people will be the maneuverability. So the turning circle is 12.9 meters, which is actually good for a pickup truck, but in many cars and SUVs, I would make it round this particular bit here. And now I think I'm gonna cause, ah, uh, someone went behind me, absolute chaos. These cameras here, they're really helping out. This van driver cannot be bothered to wait. It's got free range eggs to get to market. Anyhow, thank you for that, I appreciate it. Whew, that was a bit embarrassing. I mean, that's the major problem that you're gonna have with one of these things. And the steering, I mean, it's quite slow, but it's light. It's not like a workout trying to maneuver this thing around when you're having to weave about through very tight town streets. Apart from that turning circle issue, it's actually pretty easy to live with. And to be fair, you know, many big SUVs would have the same kind of problem. And people drive them round town, no problem at all. Actually quite civilised and doesn't feel as agricultural as I thought it would do. Hmm. One thing that really stands out is the gearbox. It's so smooth. I can't really tell that it's changing gears. And the brakes, they're also nice and progressive. It's nice. You forget that you're in a work vehicle. You really, really do. But will that be the case as we head out onto some faster roads? Right, and let's see how well this truck accelerates from 40 to 70 miles an hour. So I'm just at around 40 now, I'm gonna floor it. Gearbox is quick to respond. Pickup is pretty strong from this three litre diesel. There we go, 70. Yeah, that was pretty nippy, that was. Pulls well, this engine. The only thing I'm really noticing is some wind noise. I think it's from the big door mirrors. I'm very surprised there's hardly any road noise. I thought there'd be a lot more than there actually is. That's impressive. Now, I'm really enjoying the raised driving position here. Great view forward. The seats are quite comfortable. I could do a lot of miles in this truck. But how far could I go between Phillips? Well, Volkswagen says this thing will return 28 miles to the gallon, though this one in reality is doing 24 miles to the gallon, and that's without any load on board. Speaking of having a load on board, often that helps with pickup trucks to steady their suspension because the springs are set up to cope with having weight in the back, and so when you don't have that weight in the back, they can can feel a little bit bouncy and indeed this one going down this twisty road with a slightly poor surface on it you do get that shimmy and fidget over the bumps that you get from pickup trucks that you don't really have in a modern SUV it's not terrible though and it's better than most pickup trucks as for the handling itself going around corners well it's a high riding vehicle on a ladder frame chassis as long as it will go around some corners at the kind of speed you want to drive say you know 50 mile an hour down a road like this, it's fine. In fact, the car in front of me is going slower than I actually want to go, and I'm easily keeping up with it through the bends. It's more than capable. I mean, I wouldn't get too carried away, but for how you need your pickup truck to drive, this handles easily well enough. Now I'm gonna launch this to see how quick it is from naught to 60 miles an hour. Volkswagen says it'll do naught to 60 in nine seconds. Let's find out. Bit of a slow takeoff, but we're going now. That was weird. It's like it didn't launch properly. Let's try it just not brake boosting. It's a bit better. 8.96 seconds. It's a bit quicker than they said by the tiniest margin. Yeah, it doesn't like you to put your foot on the brake and the accelerator at the same time. It like kills the power. So then, what's my final verdict on the Volkswagen Amarok? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should shortlist the Amarok. It's really good for work and it's really good for pleasure because it feels quite nice to drive for a pickup. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like. Let me know if you agree with my verdict in the comments below. Click on those windows there for some more videos or on that box there to get a car wow to sell your car the easy way. Thanks for watching.